Hi everyone, I'm Alex and I will show you in this video how to enable full text search in a Cloud Firestore database using a third-party search service named Algulia and Android. Because Firestore does not support native indexing or search for text field in documents, we will use this solution as also suggested in this official documentation. So let's get started. As you can see, I have already created a new project in Android Studio and defined our Firebase Firestore object that points to our root reference. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's go ahead and add a few products in our Cloud Firestore database. And for that, let's create a collection reference. And let's name it Product Ref which is equal to our root ref collections of products. Now let's create three maps and call it map1 which is equal to new hash map. Inside this map1 let's put a product name. let's say milk. Let's copy and paste these lines two more times and change this with map2 and this with map3. Let's change this product name to soy milk and the last one with let's say bacon. Let's create now a right batch, which is equal to our root ref and call batch. Right batch and call set. First argument is a document reference, which is our product ref and call document. And the second one is a map, which is in our case is map one. Let's copy and paste this code two more times. Let's change this with map2 and this with map3. And in the end, just call write batch and call commit. Guys, this is an atomic operation. Either all of these operations succeed or none of them are applied. Because I have already created an account, let's open Algulia official documentation and let's copy this dependency and paste it in our build gradle file and hit sync now. From the getting started section of our official documentation let's init our index by adding these two lines of code and paste it over here. I will remove these quotation marks because I have already created these fields before. But guys, I'm not gonna show you the values of my keys. But remember, to maintain security, never use your admin API key on your frontend or share it with anyone. In your front end, just use the search only API key or any other key that has search only rights. To get this key, just go on Algulia's website and on the left hand side you'll see the API section. So let's create an index and call it simply products and hit create. And as you can see, it was successfully created. Let's do this also in our code and let's change this with products. In order to add multiple objects to this index, as mentioned also in the official documentation, we need to use a list of JSON objects. And then call add async objects async method on our index object and pass a new JSON array object with our list as an argument. Let's copy all these lines 
and let's paste it in our code. Let's duplicate this line because we'll add three products, but I'm not gonna add these objects like this. I will pass the map directly to the constructor and let's remove the remaining code. Let's do this also for the second map and for the third map. And let's remove this code. Let's also remove this and change the name of the list. Let's say product list. And now let's run this code to see if it works. Now let's open our Firebase console and hit refresh. And as you can see, all three products were added to the database. And as well in our index. Because we have already added these products to the database, let's return to our code and comment all these lines of code because they are not needed anymore. Now we can display our three products in a list or even better in a recycler view. But let's choose for this video the simplest solution and just use a list view. Let's create now a layout that will hold the list view and an edit text. Let's change this coordinator layout with the linear layout and also add the orientation, which will be vertical. Let's add the edit text, which will be match parent and wrap content. Let's assign it also an ID, which will be simply edit text. And let's also add a hint, which will be search. Let's add now the list view, which will be match parent and match parent. And let's also assign it an ID, which will be list view. Now let's find these views in our activity. And we have edit text, which is edit text, find view by id, r.id.edit text. Let's find also our list view, which is list view equals find view by id, r.id dot list view. To display the products, let's take a look at the Firestore documentation regarding getting data. And as you can see, it can be done using a get call. So let's copy this code. Let's get our products ref and paste the entire code over here. Inside the incomplete method, let's create a list and call it simply list, which is equal to new array list. Instead of this line of code, let's add to our list the product name, which is document, get string, and pass the product name. Now, let's create an array adapter. and call it array adapter, which is equal to new array adapter and pass as the first argument our context. As the second argument, let's use a built-in XML, which is android.r.layout and just use the simple list item one and pass as the last argument our list. In the end, just simply get our list view and call set adapted method and pass our array adapter as an argument. Now let's see if it works. I have my 
emulate the running and as you can see all three products are correctly displayed in our list view together with our edit text in order to filter our products accordingly to what we are typing in this edit text let's get our edit text object and call a text change listener and pass a new text watcher instance as an argument and as you can see, we already have three methods implemented. Next, let's first uncomment these two lines of code. And inside the after text change method, let's add a query. Let's go to the official documentation website and let's copy this code and paste it over here. Let's also import these two classes. Let's do some changes. Let's change this with editable to string and let's set the attribute only to our product name. And inside the request completed method, let's add a lock statement to see how our content JSON object looks like. And let's run now this code. Let's type M from milk. And as you can see, this is our JSON object. Let's copy this result and paste it over here to see in a more human readable way. And as you can see, we have here a JSON array, which contains exactly two objects that are starting with letter M. So let's get this JSON array in code. So we have JSON array, let's call it hit, which is equal to content, get JSON array and pass hits as an argument. As you can see, we have here an error. And for that, let's surround this with a try and catch block. In order to get those objects, we need to loop through this JSON array. But first, let's create a list and call it simply list, which is equal to new array list. Now we have four int i equals zero. i is less than our his JSON array length i plus plus and now let let's get for each iteration the JSON object and call it simply JSON object which is hit get JSON object and pass the i as an argument and now we can simply get the product name. So we have string product name, which is equal JSON object, get string and pass the product name as an argument. Now let's add this product name to our list. And now simply just copy these two lines of code and paste it over here. And let's see if it works now in our emulator. I have my emulator running and let's search first for bacon. And as you can see, only bacon remains as a result. Let's search for soy milk and let's search again for milk. And as you can see, it worked pretty fine. So that's it with this tutorial. So hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.